Felix here. Good morning to you. On a day of Israeli tensions, the president heading to Israel, NVIDIA getting walloped by the US administration, and just general markets feeling a little bit queasy. Tallulah has found us some good news, haven't you, Tallulah? Do you want to share it with us? This is Tallulah, my chief financial analyst, who's a little Hong Kong street kitten when we found her. And she has dug up some data that will make the red this morning look like a temporary event because actually the fundamentals are looking really nice. Let's walk through the first item here on the screen after you've smashed this like button to show your appreciation for good news because you know it's hard to find nowadays, isn't it? What have we got? This is CTA algo trading data. The computers that trade, a lot of the money out there are doing this this week. Thanks to Goldman Sachs for sharing it with us. Now, what is everyone worried about? Well, if the market goes down big this week, they're going to sell $4 billion, which really isn't a lot, not a lot at all. If the market's flat this week, they're buying $30 billion. And for the month, if the market's flat, they're also buying $30 billion. And if the market's down, yeah, they're selling $65 billion, but that's not a huge amount. So what's actually saying to us is that the upside, because if the market goes up, they're buying 77 billion this week. If the market goes up for the month, they're buying 239 billion. The upside is far, far greater than the downside, and the downside's pretty limited. Secondly, what if you got to help this on the 20th? Buybacks come back. That's supportive. Look at the earnings just in, they're all pretty good. The banks were good. Well, Goldman's was a little shaky, but we're expecting that. Uh, Johnson & Johnson's got good data out. We just had retail data in, which was actually very strong. And you might think, therefore, the Fed has to do more. But let's talk about that in a second. But let's just run through a couple of the fear items. Actually, no, let's look at retail sales first, because I've got it on my screen here. So we were expecting 0.3% month-on-month retail growth. Now, I did show you yesterday the Chase Manhattan October credit card data, which was showing a massive spending binge because people think Christmas came early this year. And that kind of gave us a bit of a hint that spending was going to be stronger than expected. 0.7% up, that's pretty significant. If you take out gas, which is energy and oil and, and, and autos is still 0.6%. That is six times higher than what we we're expecting. So the soft landing miracle is alive and the US consumer isn't as weak as we thought. So what does that mean? Well, if you're a misery, you're going to say it means the Fed has to raise rates more. But it also says that the Fed might just get its temporarily, at least, and give me about two minutes to disprove this, the, the soft landing that they want, which is the place we all want to go to, right? Nirvana, you know, that kind of thing. La la land. OK, then what's the fear? So Bloomberg put this out very helpfully, saying there's an oil freight surge, shipping rates across the Mediterranean, which is a little pond below Italy uh, and, and north of Africa have surged and they put out this chart and they go, oh my God, oil freight have just doubled. Recession and interest rates and inflation are going to get us all. This, this cat seems pretty relaxed. It's quite heavy, surprisingly. Surprisingly heavy. Uh, we get a little workout going in here. Um, well, let's zoom out a little bit. So I zoomed out a little bit and I looked at the actual Deep sea freight transportation, which is really what matters, especially for the US. And freight rates have actually come down. And then, yeah, they've come up from the Israel conflict this much. Yeah. So be cautious when you see fearful headlines. Are you all right? Are you quite relaxed? Are you quite relaxed? She wants to go back and crawl around. So actually, there isn't an oil freight disaster. So that's that's something else. Now, secondly, 
is to make you feel absolutely giddy and excited on the inside. If you think that the way I trade and all the options thing is super, super complicated, then we've got the thing for you, which is a strategy where we trade just one stock, one stock only. It's all you need to understand. We back tested this over eight years back. The strategy has an 80% win ratio. And I'll teach you the core strategy of this for free this Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Now, I put this out yesterday, last night, and 350 people signed up for this, which is just insane. So the spots are going to really, really run out. Uh, so grab one if you haven't already and you want to learn that. Simple, super good for uh, for beginners particularly, or just people who are really busy and only want to learn like a, a simpler concept than, uh, than the whole shebang. Now, Let's also talk about oil because that's partially why the market's worried about Biden visiting Israel. Yeah, it might delay the conflict a couple of days, but if it gets bigger, isn't the oil market going to go nuts? Well, again, I look at the algo funds, the CTAs who've bought oil, and they're at pretty high levels of positioning, very high levels of positioning, and essentially at extreme levels of like 98% of where they usually are. So they can't actually go that much higher, which again says to me, yeah, I don't think oil's going to go down, but I also don't see it exploding. Uh, Joseph says, send Felix some likes so we can keep this uh, going. Uh, absolutely. I, I, I would love that. I appreciate that. There's still there, like 260 people watching here going, nah, I'm not going to press the like button. It might, be, it might just burn a calorie. Why waste the calorie when I can take, you know, we go <laughs> video coming out on that later as well. And that's, of course, the other solution to the oil problem is you find some sort of dictator chap, great moustache, by the way, and say, well, maybe he isn't quite as repugnant as we thought. Why don't we go to Barbados, yay, and um, talk for days and weeks, because they tell it's really nice in Barbados, Sandy Lane, and then um, we're going to, they're going to promise us fairer elections and we'll go buy their oil. See, oil solves everything. That's, that's, that's the glorious thing about oil. Think about it. Oil will make you like your worst enemy, nemesis, people you think are dictators, barbarians. Give them some oil and you'll go over there and you give them a big hug. So really, I mean, oil is what's keeping world peace alive, isn't it? Something like that. So that's happening and that's supportive. I mean, that's not good for the oil price if you're bullish oil. Uh, okay, then let's get a little bit more um, more gloomy. <laughs> uh, this is the amount of defaults on loans, regular ones, and in blue, high yield bonds. They're going up, right? And when was the last time they were going up like that? Well, they did it in 2020. They did it in 2008. They did it in 2017, just before the 18 financial crisis. They did it also in the dot-com crisis. So, sorry, folks, but you are going to get a recession. After you vote in the next El Presidente in 2024, you are going to get a recession, and it'll be someone else's fault, undoubtedly. Uh, this is from Goldman Sachs. Uh, it's the fat trade, obesity drugs. They're saying... The market's going to grow 50% per year compounded. That is astoundingly exciting. So it's so exciting. I've actually just finished a video on this, which is coming out after this. So smash the subscribe button and you get a notification if you're lucky and you might get to watch it and learn something. I've done a benchmark and everything. You can download it. But this is part of the reason why this morning isn't looking quite as rosy as, as we would like. The United States government, in its infinite uh, idiocy, has said that they're restricting the sale of chips that NVIDIA designed for the Chinese market uh, in new export curbs that are designed to block China's access to highly advanced semiconductor technology. It's a bit late for that, isn't it? And it's going to target the A800 and the H800 chips and um, those curbs, including... The updated rules released Tuesday aim to prevent China from accessing cutting-edge technology military uses. So NVIDIA is probably going to come up with the B700 chips and the S700 chip, and uh, the party will keep going, I imagine. Sanctions have never worked.
on anything ever. But yeah, the market doesn't like it. And I show you how much the market doesn't like it this much. NVIDIA down three and a half percentage points this morning. Uh, China isn't a huge part of the export business, actually. And it might be that there is somebody in, I don't know, Vietnam who buys the chip and then magically it lands in China. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but how, how do you control that? How, how do you police that? It's just, it's just, it just doesn't achieve anything, honestly. Um, how will this affect VinFast? <laughs> I like that. Uh, brilliant. I just been to Barbados, Jerome. I'm glad you're here. Um, but Jerome is here to remind us uh, that you can live on a sailing boat and, and enjoy the good life and, and, and trade while you're doing it. Uh, thank you. Can you get paid to go to Barbados as well? Join the government and there you are. Did Facebook ban you for saying financial freedom? Something like that, Apalabut. Yes. So I my Facebook account got cancelled. Got blocked. Bastards. Um, Meta isn't really a fan of you managing your money and, and, and doing well. Um, so yeah, there we are. Uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit later. Andrea, you finally got COVID. Well, congratulations. You are now one of us. Brilliant. I hope you're feeling all right. I mean, it's basically like, it feels like flu, doesn't it? So do the usual things that you Italians do when you get flu, down a few bottles of uh, Quavit or, uh, you know, whatever it is you do, have some extra Barolo and, um, and you'll be just fine. So pre-market, yeah, looking a little bit, little bit red, but I think it's just a little anxiety around the Middle East. I don't think there is anything serious going on here. Look at the Johnson Johnson earnings, beat on profits, beat on revenue. Bank America beats on profits, beats on revenue. Lockheed Martin obviously beats on profits, beats on revenue because there's a war or two going on and they're going, brilliant, more people dying, yay. I mean, I don't know how you can be the CEO of an arms manufacturer. I, I don't know. I don't think I could sleep at night. But uh, there we are. Now, tomorrow, of course, is the biggie, Tesla and Netflix tomorrow, after after the market. Right? So you, you can enjoy the, 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 the day. And then the end of the day, it's going to be going to be getting really exciting. Very, very exciting. Palantir changed their earnings from 6th to 2nd November. Um, yeah, it doesn't mean a lot. Um, Earnings dates get moved around a little bit for, for whatever reasons, but they have a bit of a window there. Futures are red, yes. VIX is up 5%. The dollar is up a little bit. US Treasuries are up a little bit. QQQ is this. And I think this is a bit of an overreaction. So we got in the retail data here, and we've fallen half a percentage point since. So we were doing all right till the retail data kicked in. Uh, I, 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 I'm on the path. But this is a bit of an overreaction. U.S. 10-year Treasury yields are up a little bit at 4.82. Let's pop that on a day chart to give you some perspective. So, yeah, they are moving towards the highs. We're 4.88. Um, and I think it's just the market trying to figure out what happens in Israel. The market hates uncertainty, and they're really dragging it out from a market point of view. So, uh, and obviously everyone's trying to contain this conflict so that it doesn't spiral out of control. Uh, but yeah, this goes up, the markets go down. It's just kind of what happens. Any idea where we have 17 Fed speeches this week? Last week as well, says Alpha. Uh, I think they want to be famous. I, I think they'd like to be on, you know, America's next supermodel, that sort of type of thing. And, and they're not. So therefore, they just go and give speeches and people will interview you if you are a Fed president. And they will invite you to places if you are a Fed president, even if you've got nothing to say. It's just one of those things. Does it make sense? No, of course not. Good time to buy U.S. bonds, says Jesus Christ. There you go. Straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah, exactly. If you've ever thought about buying bonds, this is probably but it's a better moment than you've had at any time this year, pretty much. Your stock heat map is green, says Mustafa. How's that possible? Are you looking at yesterday? This is yesterday, if you want to soothe your nerves. So again, this morning is a bit of a rebound from that. There's a bit of uh, Israel heat in it. Then you have the stronger retail data, which means that 
Potentially, you could argue the Fed needs to do more because the U U.S. consumer isn't broken and lying on the floor, crawling and looking for bits of food yet. Uh, and, and we kind of predicted that yesterday from the credit card data that we had out. So I think it's just... It's a bit of a one of those wobbly mornings where we're just all feeling a little bit wobbly. And then NVIDIA, that export restriction, another one came in that kicks NVIDIA a little bit. And that sort of drags down everything. Not really sure why it does, but it just does. And I think on those days, you just have to focus on what you're doing. You can make money out of it and, and, and learn and, and, and not get freaked out by, by this because there isn't really anything fundamental here. There's one thing I'm super excited about. I just got this. The wealth accelerator planner which is a does that improve the video if you don't see my face <laughs> which is a planner as it says it's got my name on it which is rather exciting is it which i've just published on on amazon and it's like 160 pages thick and i use exactly this myself uh, every day to write out what my goals and targets are and what i'm aiming for and everything else and it'll give you a daily schedule, a weekly one, a monthly one. It'll help you to really think deep and spell out your life goals and everything else. And it's an incredibly important thing to do, to do your life reviews on a regular basis if you want to get to where you want to get to. Before I did this, I used to work for like 10 bucks an hour, which sucked. So if you want to get your hands on one of these, they are on Amazon. I put the link down below. I think it's felixfriends.org slash planner. And... I just hope it helps you every day to like refocus your mind on what's actually important, what matters, not just money, but life overall, health, wealth, wellness, mindset, family, love, relationships, all of it, and keep you on track or put you on track if you're currently not on track. So check it out. Um, free giveaway. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that, but I've done it before with books and it's an absolute pain in the neck to send out lots of books on Amazon to people because you have to type in all the addresses. So it's a bit of a pain in the neck, to be honest with you. And, and a digital version doesn't really make a lot of sense because I think you really need a hard copy so you can write in it, you know, because it's got a got a cover. So, um, but yeah, we'll, maybe we'll give away a few. It's just, we've done it before. We gave away like 50 books or something. And then it's a huge bloody effort to collect the mailing addresses. So, um, but yeah, I appreciate the, the sentiment, Matt. A real tuning up, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Jerome's hanging out with little people. Dwarfs, absolutely. Are you fed up of the Fed speeches? Yes. Um, rather bored of them. Uh, the, the, the chairman is cat sliding off my legs. Why? 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 You've got claws. You realize that, don't you? They scratch people sometimes. Okay, she is sorry. Is that a face that's sorry? I think that's a face that's sorry. Okay, you can sit back down again. So the, what I was trying to say is, just stop talking about the Fed. It's boring people. It's that um, Fed Chair Powell here speaks on Thursday after the initial jobless claims. Hang on, we should have just gotten some more data out, right? Exactly, which is industrial production higher than expected. Capacity utilization higher than expected. Manufacturing higher than expected. So you could therefore argue the Fed has to do more. Did I just say that out loud? I think I did. Don't tell anyone. And QQQ is down 0.9% on that glorious news at the moment, which is quite an important point. So we are, as we speak pre-market, below the 50-day moving average line and also below the 100-day moving average line here, that wine stain sort of color there. And that would be somewhat bearish. It'd be a lot more bearish if we dropped below 364. Share screen. Oh, yeah, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, here's the QQQ. Okay, let me show you that again. Yellow line, 50-day moving average. We're at that dotted orange line here pre-market. And we're also below the 100-day moving average line. So this is potentially one of those, you know, Jesus Christ cross moments. Sorry, death cross moments. Just because we have them on the, on the chat here. 
Giovanni, you want a five-day full immersion coaching program uh, in the Costa Azura um, or in Sardinia? Yes, yes. I, I like I like your location choices. It's a it's a thought. I, I'm not against it. still using feather and ink. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Or, you know, I dictate this to someone, to a dwarf who writes it out. <laughs> um, what did I always want to look up uh, was, can you explain the difference between yield and bond price? Yeah, it's an inverse relationship, basically. So if you look at the US 10-year bond yield, this is the yield. And then if you add to that, the US 10, the actual bond price, well, it moves in exactly the opposite direction. Why is that? Well, I'll write it out for you. It might be easier to understand. So bonds get issued at $100 value. And they then trade like a stock would. Now, they also typically pay a, let's call it a dividend to make this sort of simpler, like stock language. Uh, so say they pay 3%. The stock or the bond rather, might therefore fluctuate and it might go up or it might go down. Now, at the moment, bonds have, prices have gone down a lot. So if the bond... Now, trades at, what's the 10-year trading at? Okay, it doesn't quite work that way, does it? Because it's percentage terms. Uh, no, it's, yeah, it's trading at 92. The trade's at $92. What does that mean? Well, it means that if you buy this, so if you buy at $92 on expiry, if you will, you will receive 100. So you're making an $8 profit. So your yield has gone up, right? Your return has gone up. So the cheaper a bond, the higher its yield. So they have that inverse relationship. So we look at high yields because then the money gets sucked out of the stock market into the bonds because it's a low, lower risk trade. Pick the debt can down the road. That seems to be the plan so far, doesn't it? Now, you could do something about that. One very simple thing is you click the like button and everything goes away. <laughs> it's like student loan forgiveness. It was never there, poof. Uh, apparently that's how it works. So yeah, that's kind of what we're on about today. Now, what did I say there was some good news? If you just tuned in, it's it's this here. It's the CTAs, the ALGO funds. What did we do there? That was new. The ALGO funds who are trading stupid money, the computer money, which is quite a lot, if the market goes up, it's got a green pen. This week, they're going to buy $77 billion, which is $35 billion more than we thought. The market goes up this month, they're going to buy $235 billion, almost $70 billion more than we thought. So the upside is huge. Now, what about if the market goes down? Well, if the market goes down this week, as it's trying to today, well, they're going to sell only $4 billion. The market market goes down big this month. They're going to sell 65 billion. So you can see the upside is way, way bigger than the little downside. So that's quite supportive. That's quite supportive. And a lot of people know this. If you have any questions, pop them in the chat. That's what we do this live for. Always happy to answer all of your questions. But essentially, the market is going down this morning on a couple of things. One, 
Retail sales data is much higher than expected. So the U.S. consumer is still spending. Naughty you, put those credit cards away. Uh, you, are, you are displeasing the Federal Reserve. They're not happy at all there this morning. Lots of broken glass and, you know, throwing things at manservants, that sort of thing. That's what I imagine is going on in Jerome Powell's house. And the retail sales, excluding gas and excluding autos, is literally six times higher than the idiots who call themselves economists predicted. So that would mean that the Fed arguably has to do more to bring the economy to its knees. And for that reason, the QQQ, the Nasdaq is down 0.95 percentage points and the S&P at the moment 0.65 percent down. And a big part of that is also NVIDIA, now down four percentage points. What does that mean? Well, the US government in its uh, relentless drive to protect you, um, has made a deal with this guy in Venezuela <laughs> and is making it harder for Chinese companies to buy NVIDIA chips, which is going to be about as effective as a Band-Aid. Alexander, yeah, if you're in Australia, it's a, it's a little challenging to trade. Um, I have quite a lot of students in Australia. Uh, they usually stick to the spy or something like that, something that doesn't move that much. I'm glad Jesus Christ is absolving us of all of the responsibilities for everything that we've done today. Uh, come and join me this Sunday and learn one strategy, one stock. It takes a couple of hours a week. And it's the simplest thing I think anybody could possibly do to potentially make themselves an income stream. So if you are a beginner or if you're just busy or you're just intimidated by all the options jargon that we throw out there, then this one's for you. I'll teach you the core strategy for free on Sunday. FelixFriends.org slash webinar. Grab one of the last spots there. Um, can you explain what M2 money is? It's essentially the money supply. Um, so it's how much money the Fed puts into circulation, and it's gone up tremendously. And the more that goes up by, the more asset prices go up by because money seeks a return. So it goes and invests into real estate and stocks and things like that. And, and secondly, it causes inflation. It's very, very simple. The Fed denies that it causes inflation. Apparently it hasn't, but it has. Is China still buying gold, says Marwen. Uh, last data I saw, they were. Uh, but you don't know this stuff live. Now, gold is up a quarter of a percentage point today after yesterday's gap up. That's uh, supportive. And that's just part of this fear momentum that we're in. Let me change my, share my screen with you here. This is gold. Nice bounce up there yesterday. And if you look at the US dollar, same thing. The dollar is up 0.2%, a pretty lofty level still. And it's just all part, I think, this is to me all Middle East. And people are trying to figure out whether this will be a small contained war or whether this will blow into something bigger, which would then disrupt supply chains and oil and, 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 and potentially cause a lower worldwide GDP output, right? We keep hearing about money shredding. Where does that money come from? The Fed's balance sheet. So the Fed has all this money that it generated. And what did it do with the money? It bought government debt with it um, and, and mortgage debt to some extent. Uh, and that's what they are letting expire. So when those bonds expire, mature, is more correct word, they're not reinvesting their money, and therefore they effectively reduce the amount of money that's out there. I know it's bizarre, but that's how it works, but that's the way it works. Uh, so yeah, one is QE and one is QT, like tightening and one is uh, easing. Um, smash the uh, like button if you uh, want the market to improve today. <laughs> it's looking like this at the moment. A bit of a rebound, I think, from the big tech stocks here. My feeling, and I probably am wrong on this, would be that this is exaggerated and it's going to go up a little bit more. Uh, similarly with NVIDIA, 
I think normally these reactions, we have to re reactions when they last banned ag exports to China uh, that were pretty significant and then they were kind of overblown by the end of it. Ken, do you see the 50-day moving average as a key indicator? Yeah, I think it's an important one. I think it's an important one. Nothing in itself is the answer, uh, except for Jesus Christ. But <laughs> the 50-day the to me is, is, is the most important line that I put in there. Uh, TL, where do you find information uh, for purchases and sales? Well, you tune into this channel. That's probably the easiest thing. Or you scour the internet and, and, and your friends for... Uh, tidbits from Goldman Sachs and, and, and they, they, the big banks put the stuff out there for like the brokers to see. Now the market is officially open. So let's have a look. Avert your eyes if you're uh, of a weak disposition. And yeah, everything is down. Apple is down 1.1%, Microsoft down almost a percent, Google a third of a percent, Amazon down 1.6%, Nvidia down 4.5%, Meta down almost 1%, Tesla down 1.5%. But only, uh, well, the fat, fat drugs party is going, LLY is up, and um, everything else is pretty much down. And the banks are down. I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense. The bank earnings were good. Johnson Johnson's earnings were good. It's down 1%. This is just market sentiment going a little bit haywire here this morning, in my humble opinion. I could be wrong on that. Oliver, simple and exponential MA. I don't think it makes a huge difference. I use simple because I like simple SMAs. PayPal screen. Ah, oh, maybe, maybe because I made that video yesterday. <laughs> I don't think I have that kind of impact. It would be nice though, wouldn't it? Uh, Oleg thinks we're going to see green by the end of the day. I also wouldn't be surprised by that, uh, Oleg. I, I, I also don't think this is, to the extent we're seeing it right here, a permanent. Uh, Marion, you're moving to Singapore in two weeks. Um, is there Bloomberg for Asian markets? Yeah, just go to Bloomberg.com and there is the Asia edition up here. It'll pop up automatically rather frustratingly. So you have to keep changing it. That's probably the best one out there. Uh, Singaporean newspapers are, um, well, it's a little bit brainwashing. It's 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 very nice, but it's, it's sort of... Um, very, very optimistic on what's happening in Singapore. At least that's what I used to used to read. So I wouldn't really bother with that. Uh, yeah, still read Bloomberg, basically. Gaza pummeled as eight sits with an earshot on the border. Eight trucks stuck. And that's the problem for Israel as a as a visual, right? It's now we've seen the horrendous images. And now we are only going to see horrendous images of Palestinians suffering. And that's going to be very tough for them to keep that going. Um, so Goldman traders help counter real estate hits, stagnant M&A, Goldman's numbers were decent, and futures fall, yields rise after hot economic data, which is actually true for once. And US restricts China made, made for China chips in new sales rule, uh, which will probably have relatively little impact if, 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 if I have anything to do with it. J and J lawsuits, yeah, but they're not news. That's just that's just been around for ages, right? Talc powder, poisoning babies, that kind of thing. Just just don't use anything that comes out of a pop packet. Basically, I think that's really the solution to everything in life. But now Johnson Johnson's now only down zero point one percent, so it's kind of recovering a little bit here. Let's have a look at NVDA Life. Uh, that's going to hit a lot of people with a bit of a shock, and there's a huge amount of trading in here, so people might push this lower. Uh, I imagine the short guys will also jump all over this. So that's why this is coming down fairly harshly. But let's look at the more grown up stocks like Microsoft. You see, that's already recovering. We were down at 328. Now we're down up at through 329. So I would imagine there might be a bit of a rebound here. What about Apple? Apple is still going down. Danzo, I think we all had that baby powder, didn't we? That's why we all came out so well balanced and, uh, and, and you know, don't you glow in the dark? <laughs> yeah, but seriously, like the less the less products you use, uh, the, 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 the better. 
rate hike predictions. I don't think they've changed a great deal, but yeah, we can definitely have a look at that, Andrea. Happy to. So there is the Fed rate hikes are actually traded in sort of futures. So we're expecting at the moment for the November meeting, if I was allowed to scroll down, 88% of the market says there is no rate hike in November. And yesterday, that was 94% of the market. So we come down a bit. But last week, it was 86% of the market. So nothing's really changed here. If we go into December, it's about 50-50. And yesterday, that was 35, 65. Uh, a week ago, it was only a 30% chance of a rate hike. So I think we are kind of leaning towards the December rate hike, you know, do you like for Christmas, children? We'd like a rate hike to make more people unemployed, <laughs> right? Uh, that, that's sort of what's, what's going to happen. And I think that's, that's fairly likely. I think the, the one more, like, you know, why not? Why not? Uh, Meta, let's have a look. Meta also down 1.1%, a little bit erratic trading, bounced up and then now down again. Uh, but yeah, it's I think it's the watch Apple, whether that comes back up. Uh, NVIDIA probably will. Well, actually, it's coming up a little bit here as well. Uh, QQQ overall also starting to recover a little bit here, at least on, on the, the, the current candle, but 1.1% down at the moment. <laughs> uh alrighty guys any other questions you guys have let me know if you haven't already come and join me on sunday where i will teach you one simple trading strategy on one stock only i'll teach you all the cool stuff and um it'll be fun so brilliant for people who are new to trading might have an interest in it if you have limited time you want to keep it simple then this one's for you Talula says don't sweat the red numbers today. Everything will come out in the wash, won't it? I think so. And um, enjoy your day. Smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. I've got a video coming out on my top buy for the moment. And I thank you profusely for tuning in and, and building this community. 59,000 subscribers this morning is what I woke up to, which is kind of insane. So thank you for that. It's brilliant. Uh, we want to reach more people, a lot more people. Uh, so we have big plans here and I appreciate you tuning in. Thanks for watching.